Welcome back guys. In this episode my mechanic will do battery maintenance and in case battery cannot be saved it will be replaced. Also software update is on the list for this 7 series. I believe that my mechanic cannot wait when he finally starts with that. Hey, not that quick. You didn't pay me for last time I worked. Alright, alright. Here, don't choke on them. Ah, blueberry muffins. Hey, few of them are missing. I was hungry, so sue me. Maybe I will. Okay, don't worry. I'll give you a bunch of them when you finish this job, alright? Alright. After I eat all those muffins, we will look on some special tools for our use. So, muffins are gone and I'll back to work. For this job I need some special tools. So, what special tools I'll use? One of them is this Sealy Schumacher battery support unit and charger in one. It's ideal for ECU reprogramming, software updates and diagnostic work on vehicles. With continuous output 70 amperes, what can be maximized to 100 amperes for 3 minutes when it's needed. Next very important thing, it can charge a completely discharged battery. I already tried that on battery that was completely discharged. It showed 0.0, .0 volts and it charged it to full state in about one hour. I thought that next day that battery will be again discharged because when battery is discharged to this state it mostly not savable. But that doesn't happen. Car where that battery was started next day like nothing. It was big surprise for me. Also this tool got desulfation mode which I'll use in this episode. And how sulfation in battery is created? Basically when battery is left discharged for a longer period of time then it's suitable for desulfation. Sometimes it helps, sometimes not. Next thing, this tool is also suitable for different types of batteries with different charging rates. And main thing, it's controlled by microprocessor, so it doesn't overcharge a battery. Basically, it's fully automatic. So that's it in a short about this tool. Next tool is used for diagnostic, programming and software updating for latest BMW, Mini and Rolls-Royce vehicles. It's the Icom Next A interface. But without a laptop and software is this thing just expensive piece of nothing. We need a laptop and software. Voila, here is the laptop with pre-installed software called Ista. Also, this software and this interface is what BMW is using for programming and every other thing. Last special tool is this small tester. It offers full in-vehicle diagnostic of the vehicle battery, starter and alternator. But the main thing I want to look at are cold cranking amps. If you are interested what cold cranking amps means, basically it's a battery ability to start engine in cold temperatures. In layman's terms, it's like how much power can battery provide in very short period of time. Alright, we got all special tools what we need for this job. So let's remove the battery to check in what state it is. First step, open the boot. Second, switch off the vehicle and wait about 15 minutes. Next step, removing the battery. Always disconnect negative cable first, then positive. Alright, here we got the battery. Let's look at this number, 950. That's the maximum capacity of cold cranking amps for this battery. Next thing, batteries from a dealer like BMW got stamped numbers on negative terminal. It means in what year and week they were made. This one here is from 2016. Alright, so let's do testing. Regular battery, AGM flat plate, Select the rating, which is 950 cold cranking amps and outside temperature is above 0 degrees Celsius. And now it's testing. It's not charged and it's saying recharge and retest, which I'm going to do. But right now we can see that after 5 years of using this battery, remaining capacity of cold cranking amps is only 680. So let's try desulfation and we will see if there will be any changes. When desulfation will be done, 
charger automatically switch to charging mode and will charge battery till it's fully charged. After that, it will switch to maintain mode and will keep the battery fully charged. This whole process can take up to 12 hours, so I'm going to leave it for overnight. So, new morning is here and the whole process is successfully done. So let's make a test. So battery tester is corrected. So it's saying bad and replace. And with this whole process the battery was increased by 56 cold cranking amps, which is not much. And also 736 cold cranking amps is not that much for 7 series loaded with lots of gadgets. So right now I'm going to put this battery back to 7 series and proceed with software update and I will order the new battery. So let's connect everything what is needed. First, battery support unit. Second, ICOM interface. And last one, connect laptop and turn on diagnostic mode. Now let's check everything. So, battery support unit is turned on, voltage output is set up to 13.8 volts, which is ideal for coding, reprogramming and software update, and also flash reprogram mode is active. So, let's start with the update and hope it doesn't go wrong, because if this process fail while flashing the new software, in case power is cut on my street, then Carville doesn't have a source of power from the battery support unit, voltage dropped to threshold value of 12.5 volts, whole process will be shut and then I can go to work by walk. So even if you have all right tools, there is still risk of breaking the modules in car. And also I hope that it won't be like with the mobile phones, that after every newer update it goes slower. So update was successful, after that 7 series will do some calibration and it's done. But when we look at the fault memory, there is fault about oxygen sensor what wasn't there before. So let's remove this fault and hope it will not come back. So we can see that the fault is still there and solution what is the offering is check wires and plug connections and if it doesn't help I have to buy a new oxygen sensor and replace it. So we'll come back to it later and now something else. Recently I changed engine oil and when I did a reset for oil service interval it showed me the next change must be done before reaching 14,000 miles which is I think too much miles for one engine oil interval so I'd like to change it by coding to 12 months and 50,000 kilometers or in miles 9,000. Also I like that this software is very easy to operate. Surprise, my new battery has been just delivered on my working table and it's the same capacity like the battery before. You can see that I choose the Varta battery brand because I think this is one of the best batteries brands and also previous battery was Varta. Only difference is that it was manufactured for BMW. So let's test this new battery. And it's showing good and pass. State of charge 12.68 volts, which is almost state of full charge, and 954 cold cranking amps, which is even slightly more than the capacity of battery. But I like to have fully charged battery, so I'll connect the charger and I leave it to charge for overnight. And it's done. 
If somebody is interested in what date and aftermarket Varta batteries are made, it's those three numbers in the corner, 139, which you will find in this small diagram. So for example, mine is from March 2021. So let's finally install this battery into the 7 series and this time the other way. I will put the 7 series into the sleep state by ISTA. First step, connect the iCOM and laptop. Second, open the boot. Third, activate diagnostic mode. And now work on ISTA. First, press complete identification. Vehicle management. Service functions. Body. Voltage supply. Activate rest state. Power down command. Yes. Now it can take up to 10 minutes for the 7 series to reach standby mode. Connection was lost and now I know that the 7 series already reached sleep state. And now a little bit of manual work. Yeah, I got it. Don't forget on vent plug, so fumes from battery doesn't get to interior. Yeah, it's there. Done. Next, reconnect ICOM and activate diagnostic mode. Back to ISTA, break connection. Close operation. And again, complete identification. We can see that the voltage is quickly dropping down so I rather connect the battery support unit. Back to laptop. So again, vehicle management, service functions, voltage supply, and register battery replacement. Press register battery exchange. Same capacity. It's not original BMW part. And it's saying battery exchange was successfully registered and in order for the registration to be permanently applied in the ECU, let the vehicle go to sleep. So just simply. Next step, the date and time of the vehicle will be set. So again, turn on diagnostic mode. Then just press continue and it will be done. And we can see that the time was changed. Let's do the vehicle test again. We can see that fault regarding oxygen sensor after catalytic converter is still there. Let's delete fault memory so non-existing faults will disappear. And we still got here that one fault with oxygen sensor. So here is the situation. I already checked the wires and resistance on oxygen sensor and it showed nothing. So now I know that the oxygen sensor is definitely faulty. I ordered a new one and here it is with a special tool for loosening. So let's replace that thing. First step, raise up the 7 series.
remove the plastic cover for transmission. To understand how difficult it is to get the oxygen sensor, here is the photo of special tool for loosening and inside of it is oxygen sensor. Here is the old one and let's proceed with the new one. So, oxygen sensor is installed, and now I'm going to check the fault memory in ISTA. So again, connect battery support unit, ICOM, and turn on diagnostic mode. Complete identification. Delete fault memory. And it's gone. But there is another fault, I know about that, it's the camera window heating, probably it needs new glue. It will be sorted later. Everything what was on the list is done, and my mechanic is probably right now choking on a bunch of blueberry muffins in shed. So that's all for this episode, see you in the next one.